Welcome to this section, which is a brief visualization refresher. Let's see the topics that we are going to see in this section. First, we will review Matplotlib, which is the main Python library for doing visualization. Then we will take a look at the pandas capabilities for doing visualizations. And finally, we will talk about Seaborn, a very nice library for doing complex statistical plots with very few lines of code. This section is meant to be only a refresher. If you feel comfortable working with these tools, then you can safely skip this section. Plotting with Matplotlib. First, in this video, we will talk about uh, what is Matplotlib. We will give some basic terminology that we use frequently in Matplotlib, like figure, subplot, labels, axis, and others. We will produce some examples using the object-oriented interface, which is the preferred way to use this library, the other being the pyplot interface, which we will not use in this course. And finally, we will give some examples and some code for you to see how to do some customizations in your plots. Okay, so let's talk about Matplotlib. Matplotlib is a plotting library which produces publication quality figures in a variety of formats and interactive environments. It can be used in Python scripts, the Python interpreter, the IPython shell, or the Jupyter notebook. It can also be used with um, other graphical user interfaces. Matplotlib tries to make easy things easy and hard things possible. That is the philosophy behind this library. Although uh, Matplotlib is written primarily in pure Python, it makes heavy use of uh, NumPy and provides a very good performance for large data set. So now let's take a look at some terminology that we use in Matplotlib. Let's go to our notebook. So here we have some very useful resources if you want to know more about the Matplotlib, especially the gallery. Let's see and learn about some of the basic concepts in Matplotlib. Figures, subplots, and axes. So here we have a typical plot in Matplotlib. Let me adjust the zoom of my browser so you can see the figure completely. Okay. First, we have the figure, which is the top level container. It is the overall window in which everything is drawn on. You can have multiple independent figures, and the figure can contain multiple subplots. Now, usually one figure only contains one plot, but you can make many subplots inside one figure. The other term that is used for subplot is axis. Now, most plotting is done with respect to a subplot. A subplot object must belong to a figure. And the way we do plotting in Matplot is by using methods in these uh, subplot objects. Most of the subplot objects have a Y axis and an X axis. And these axes contain things like ticks, tick locations, tick labels, and so on. So remember, a figure is the top level container. Inside a figure, we have one or many subplots, and each subplot is composed of other objects like x axis, y axis, labels, and so on. Okay, so uh, this is the usual way we import matplotlib. So this is the importing convention matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And here, we use this line in order to tell the Jupyter Notebook that we want the images or the plots rendered here in the notebook. If you don't use this line, the plots will appear in a different window. There are two ways to use Matplotlib. The PyPlot interface, which is a collection of functions that act on the currently active subplot, and we won't use that one. Instead, we will use the object-oriented interface. And here, the plotting is done with respect to a subplot object or to an axis object. And what we do uh, in the object-oriented interface is to first create the objects and then make changes to the objects 
by calling different methods. Okay, so let's see an example of this. Here I am creating a NumPy array okay, with numbers from negative 4 to 4 and I am creating other NumPy arrays y1 and y2 by taking x to the 2 and x to the third power. So here I will produce a plot using the object oriented interface. This command plt subplots will produce a figure and an axis object. So I am creating these two objects here in this line of code. Then I am using the axis object and I am using the plot method to plot x and y1. So this will be the x coordinate, this will be the y coordinate, and I want the color of this plot to be red. Now by default it will create a line plot. I am doing the same thing, so in the same object I am creating another line plot with these x coordinates, with these y coordinates, and the color to be blue. I am modifying this object, the ax object, I am modifying by saying by setting the title quadratic and cubic powers and I am modifying the x label and the y label. As you can see I am using methods from this object. So let's see the result of applying this and as you can see I have a title here which I set in this line. I have x label for the x-axis that I set in this line and I have a y label for the y-axis that I set in this line. I can create with the subplots function a grid of subplots. So for example here I am creating a grid uh, inside this figure. I am creating a grid of four axes, one, two, three, four, in two rows and two columns. And this is the advantage of the object-oriented interface because I can get every element in this axis object and modify each element with the corresponding method. So I am taking the object located at the position 0, 0, which is this one, and I am setting the title for this object to be upper left. And if I want to modify, let's say, this one, this subplot, I can get it by the index 1, 1, and I can set the title, which um, in this case is lower right. So as you can see, the title for this subplot is lower right. And here, what this for loop is doing is to set in the x tick marks and the y tick marks to blank. So that's why you don't see any marks here. So let's create here another in the array. Now let's plot x to the first power, x to the second power, x to the third power, and x to the fourth power. As you can see, since I am modifying the same object, all the plots are being plotted in the same window. Here, what I am doing is I am creating 10 subplots with just a few lines of code. And as you can see, first, uh, what I do is to create a figure that contains many subplots. In fact, it contains exactly 10 subplots in two rows and five columns. Here I modify the size of the figure. And then for every subplot, I tell Python to plot x and x to the i plus 1 power. And as you can see, uh, we get a very nice plot with x to the 1 all through x to the 10th power. Okay, in the rest of the notebook, I provide you with examples on how to modify some of the elements of the plot, like uh, the title, like the colors, like the tick marks, and the labels, and so on. So I'm not going to go into detail about how this code works, but you can take a look at the code provided in the notebook. Okay, so in this video we talked about matplotlib, we talked about the basic terminology, and we provide some introductory examples on how to produce plots using the object-oriented interface.